I'm back again, my loyal friend. I found some good stuff at this Jacksonville second and Charles over the last couple of years, and I'm hoping for the best today. Everybody, thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. Come on in, sit a spell, take your shoes off. The water's fine. I do appreciate your time. Today, we're going to be doing our January 2023 book haul. I don't know what's happened to the month of January, but it's gone. And it's February 1st, and I cannot believe it. They've been saying for many, many years, where has time gone? But wow, where did time go? Holy cow. Anyway. I'm gonna start this book haul video off with a trip to one of my most successful hotspots historically, and that's the second in Charles in Jacksonville, Florida. I was up there for work first week of the new year, beginning of the second week of the new year, and I didn't have much time, but I was able to sneak in about an hour at the second in Charles. There's a couple bookstores in that town of Jacksonville that I love, besides that, three total that I love to hit. And uh, I was only able to make it to Second and Charles. My hotel was nearby, so there you go. That's why I was there. Anyway, I got in a little bit of shopping before they closed, and they had some good stuff, some really good stuff. But the prices were just a little bit higher than I wanted to pay on a lot of the stuff that I really wanted. Hard to walk away, but sometimes you just got to know when to go. But I did buy a book, kind of. I... <laughs> Here's an explanation. I was walking through, I went to the, the uh, what do they call it? The rare and collectible section, something like that. They got a title for this two sections of the aisle there. And they usually stick the Stephen King books in there. So I went in that section. They had some unbelievably phenomenal stuff. Some titles that people just want, but either A, the price was too high, or B, the condition was not up to snuff for the ones that were priced good enough. So I left there feeling like, dang, so close. You feel like you got stole from almost. I was so close to getting some stuff that I wanted. Anyway, I'm going down the aisles and then I happened into the K's, the Stephen King section there, and they had some stuff stuck in there. The problem is when books are stuck in the rare and collectible section, the price seems to be very high. When you go to the other section, in the Stephen King section, the prices were a whole lot more amenable. And I ended up with this, a first print copy of Misery, which I didn't have. It looks real shiny because I already put it in Brodart. And I got this at a price that I couldn't pass up. I saved the sticker. I had to peel the sticker off the dust jacket to put the Brodart on, but I stuck it back here so I could remind myself when I do this video of what I paid for it three or four weeks later, $5.95. Nice, they had them for 80 bucks in the other section. Don't tell them. Anyway, a uh, first edition, first print, with the number line, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, with the price on the dust jacket, and then uh, if you wanna zoom in and look and tell me what you need to tell me there. First edition, first print copy of Misery. I didn't have it. I'd seen them for sale at stores quite a bit. And either they were way too much or the condition wasn't right. Because I don't want stuff messed up. I want it nice. I like my stuff nice. So I ended up getting one at a very uh, decent price. And if that wasn't good enough, they had another one. So I took it. I got both. And I couldn't pass up the deal. Who needs two, right? Right. So I got another one. Uh, same bat time. Same bat channel. I ended up getting me another copy of Misery. So now I have two. I don't know why, but sometimes I just couldn't pass up a good thing. I felt happy. Walked out of there with these couple of books. I only needed one, but I got two. So, hey, what should I do with the other one? I don't know. The rest of my book haul, with the exception of one, will be eBay. So I got eBay stuff, 
And then I got something directly from Centipede Press. We'll talk about that also. It came late. It, a month or a month and a half late, I think it came. So I didn't bother doing an unboxing video. There were several of them out there already. And it felt like I wouldn't bother. So I unboxed it, put it on the shelf, left it in wrappers. And I'll show you that here in a minute. But before we do, there is a book by Raymond Chandler that I do truly love. And it's The Big Sleep with Philip Marlowe. In fact, there's a series of Philip Marlowe books. And I never had a nice one. The nicest one I had was some kind of Reader's Digest sort of a thing. I forgot the, the brand or the publisher on the cover. But I'd been wanting to get something nice. And Easton Press, as far as I know, maybe the nicest out there of this book. So I'm probably going to have somebody tell me I'm way off. But anyway, I wanted a nice copy. Easton Press had them for sale. I just didn't want to pay the freight until I found a duo of Philip Marlowe, Raymond Chandler books and a twofer. I got a twofer right here. So let's first take a look at The Big Sleep, the first book in the set. And uh, as you would expect from Easton Press, you got a bonded leather boards, that beautiful hubbed spine with the gold foil stamping on the cover. And the spine, I love it. 22 karat gold page, gilded page edges. The ribbon marker, trademark stuff from Easton Press. Nice quality sewn bindings there. Good stuff. But what you, uh, let's look at our end papers here. Nice weird texture. They got a name for that paper and I forgot what it's called. Anyway, <clears throat> I just like the way it sounds when I scrape it. Now, one of the things about Easton Press is I don't know the rhyme and the reasoning that goes behind what is included in what. But looking at the beautiful frontispiece color illustration there, that's it in terms of artwork. Uh, there's, there's no more illustrations in here. Now, I've got Easton Press books that are just chock full of artwork. And then I've got them that have none. And then, like this one, has an illustrated frontispiece, which is nice. Uh, but I like more illustrations. Anyway, I've been wanting one. I finally got it. So stop your whining. And here is a sequel, The Long Goodbye, another Philip Marlowe, Raymond Chandler book. And a lot of the same stuff. It kind of matches. It's a matching set. There's others. I don't know how many they actually published out of this set, but there are others. And eventually I might get some more, but I at least wanted the big sleep. And here I got a twofer, so sweet. And looking through, there is also the illustrated front this piece. It is beautiful. I would like to have more. I'd like to have at least a few more built in throughout, but hey, I can't complain. I did get something cool. And a lot of people will ask about the text size, page colors and stuff like that. There you go. You got kind of a creamy white coloration. Uh, or somewhat small text on this one. The Big Sleep was a little bit bigger, I think. No, nah, maybe not. The Big Sleep was, if bigger, only slightly bigger. Now the next up, again, eBay purchases here. Halloween 4, and this is the ultimate edition, authorized and signed by Nicholas Grabowski, the author. And I bought it from Nicholas Grabowski, the author. So I collect novelizations of movies that I like. And I naturally, I'm a Halloween fan and I've got my favorites. This is not the, the platform for such a discussion, but I kind of wanted them all. And I've got another one from an off, what's the publisher? I don't even know the publisher's name. I'm sure I'm, uh, I should know the publisher, but it's just not a diverse media book from Antelope, California. I've got another version of this uh, book uh, authorized, expanded. It's not the original um, novelization, but this one was new. For, it, was, it was new and for sale and signed by the author. Nice little inscription there, and I, I wanted it. The price was right, so I wanted it. Added to my Halloween and my novelization collection. Nice stuff. Nothing else uh, here to jump out. I think it was 20 bucks for this signed edition. Yeah, the the list price is $19.99. I think that's what I paid for, plus shipping or maybe free shipping. I don't recall. Anyway, I jumped on it. Glad to get it. Glad to add it to the collection. Next up, F. Paul Wilson, one of my very favorite authors on God's Green Earth. 
And Repairman Jack, one of my very favorite characters ever written. And this one is Scarlet Redux. It is a graphic novel, a hardcover graphic novel. And this one is limited. It's a signed edition. So I think, I think F. Paul Wilson had said that he signed 200... And 50 copies. He signed book plates for 250 copies. And there's the cover. It's a cool cover. It's a hardcover uh, graphic novel about uh, about Repairman Jack and the last Rakosh, which is called which he calls Scarlet. And they came with this little book plate. And I believe F. Paul Wilson said he signed 250 book plates. I uh, wish they were numbered, but they are not. It just says signed edition. And then the trade edition, which I bought originally when they first came out, um, about half the price, somewhere around half the price. It doesn't say signed edition there. Otherwise, as far as I can tell, they are the same. But it is a graphic novel. I'll show you just a little bit of what it looks like inside. And I won't show you all of it. But Repairman Jack is an urban mercenary, I guess is how it could be described or how it often is described. But he's a man who uh, lives kind of off the grid. He's a island of one, a nation of one. He's got a moral code, but he plays by his own rules. And he fixes problems for people for a living, and he does pretty well at it. So he's Repairman Jack because he fixes problems. He doesn't fix lamps or microwaves or things like that. But he fixes problems for people that they're either unwilling to take to officialdom, embarrassing issues and things like that, or problems that the law can't or won't handle. That's the stuff he does. And he does it for pay. He's not Batman where he's out there just trying to do good for all. He does it for pay. He charges and he charges well. Um, but he also can't abide certain things happening in his sight, so sometimes he will get involved in things begrudgingly because he feels like he has to. He doesn't go looking for those situations. But in the very first book of that series called The Tomb, there is a Rakoshi. They're called Rakosh or Rakoshi. There's a bunch of them in the tomb, and he has identified one as Scarlet. He is the scar on his lip, obviously. He's identified him. And the tomb leaves us, that's the first Repairman Jack book, the tomb leaves us with this Rikoshi swimming out to a burning, sinking ship and disappearing. Well, we find out later on in a novella called The Last Rikosh, and it was also incorporated into the fourth or fifth book in the Repairman Jack series, I think it's the fourth one, sorry, called All the Rage, where he stumbles upon this Rikosh in a traveling freak show, circus sort of a thing. And uh, they end up having a bit of a run-in, and that Rakosh ends up, spoiler alert, off out in the, the Jersey Pine Forest and running free. Well, here he has another experience with that last Rakosh called Scarlet. And that's what that is. A graphic novel talking about that story. I strongly recommend Repairman Jack, F. Paul Wilson. I've read, I've, I've read so much from the author, I have not read a dud yet. Anyway, the last one for this video, let's talk about it a little bit. It is from Centipede Press, and it is Let's Go Play at the Adams. Let's go, anyway. <laughs> let's Go Play at the Adams by Mendel W. Johnson. And I ordered this one right away, but it came late. Some problems, whatever, whatever happened. Uh, the tracking said that it was waiting for delivery at the, the origin office, wherever they send them, their post office, waiting for it. And it never changed. So a month and a half or so went by, it never changed. So I asked Jared, hey, they're saying they still haven't received it. Can you check into it? And he said, sorry, man, I'll get you a new one out right away. And here it is. And uh, mine is number 126, if the sticker on the dust jacket has anything to say. And I didn't unwrap it. And if there's one thing in this world that I hate, it's a book in shrink wrap. It's supposed to be in shrink wrap until I get it. And then I got to take it out. Can't abide leaving my books wrapped up. But I did. I left it in shrink wrap for a week or two. I don't know, three, whatever. It's been sitting on the shelf for a little while. And here, let's get it out. Let me look at it. See what I got. All right, so 
Let's Go Play at the Adams is one that was eagerly awaited by a lot of folks. And uh, it's a book that I'm excited to read. I haven't read it, but I will. One of the great things about Centipede Press is they expose me and others to books that we'd never heard of or never would have read if we didn't see them up for sale from Centipede Press. So they're doing the good work, getting the word out about a lot of these books. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is uh, take off this dust jacket and see what she looked like underneath. Some of the things I've grown to love about Centipede Press is the quality of production. And here we have this black cloth boards, gold inlaid foil stamping on the spine. And then open it up and look at our end papers. End papers, like newspapers. And then the rear end papers are exactly the same. We have the top edge stain and the built-in ribbon marker and they do have quality smith's own bindings so i want to take a minute here and see what all is included what kind of cool stuff we got to look at real quick don't want to spend all day doing it but i do have uh some neat stuff in the centipede press books to show you i'm always happy with what i get from centipede press and a lot of folks will ask about again page colors text size stuff like that so there you go and uh i don't see any other interior illustrations in this edition so our signature page in the back it is number 126 like i told you before and is signed by stefan zimian always and dan rimple so there is let's go play at the atoms see what else before I go. Anyway, that's my book haul for the month of January 2023. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. If you take a notion, please consider like and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't hurt that much and it doesn't cost a thing. So with that being said, that's all the lies I can think of. Say la vie, baby. Doo -doo.